Hey, this video is about cooling by evaporation. Um, it's a perfect example really of something which we're all familiar with but you can't actually explain without a particle model. So we know that um, you sweat in order to lose heat out of your body when your muscles are doing work they're generating heat. If your body gets too warm it doesn't work properly so you have to sweat. So here's a picture of a woman sweating in a jungle. Here's a guy running um, and the thing to understand here is that they are both sweating because they are both exerting themselves, producing extra heat. But in the jungle you have to stop working, otherwise you die because your body overheats. In the desert you can keep running because what's happening to the sweat is it's evaporating. Of course you do have to be careful to keep drinking enough water um, so that you can carry on sweating without dehydrating. So what we need to understand is well, why is this happening in terms of a particle model? So here's our picture of some sweat, here's the water particles in the sweat. And what I've done here is I've animated them so you can see them moving. So the key thing to understand about this is that although the sweat's at one temperature, if you put a thermometer into it, you'd re read a temperature, the particles are actually moving at a variety of speeds. So some of the particles are moving quite slowly, other particles are moving quite fast. So although the sweat's got an overall temperature, that temperature doesn't tell you the energy of any particular particle, it only tells you the average energy of the particles, the kinetic energy of the particles, that is, of course. Okay, well, which one's going to escape? Well, if you saw that one go, that it, the ones that are going to escape are the ones that are moving faster. So the faster particles escape, and then hopefully you can tell from this now, the average speed of the particles that are left is now slower which effectively means that the liquid has cooled down. We can see that in maybe a slightly clearer diagrammatic sense. So here's my skin with a little bead of sweat on it. But in terms of a particle model, here are the particles in this sweat. And we can talk about these particles as if they each had their own temperature. So if all the particles were moving at this speed, right, it would be like the water was 70 degrees C. But in fact, there's a range of speeds. And when you put a thermometer in, all you're doing is measuring the average speed so here's our steps. So if, our, if we've been working hard and our temperatures reach 40 degrees Celsius, okay, here's the sweat, and if we stick a thermometer into that, it will tell us that the sweat is also 40 degrees Celsius. It couldn't be any other temperature. You don't sweat by spraying cold water onto your skin. You sweat by the sweat coming out of your skin at the same temperature that your skin's already at. What happens to this sweat? Well, what happens is the particles with the most energy escape. So this 59, 1, 51, these and the 71, these are the ones that have escaped, leaving us with less sweat on our bodies. If you again take the average of those numbers, what you'll find is that the temperature has now gone down to, let's say, 30 degrees C. But your skin, of course, is still 40 degrees C. But now you've got some water on your skin, which is colder than your skin. And what's going to happen is the energy from your skin will warm the sweat up again until they both reach a new temperature, which we'd quite like to be 37 degrees C, the normal body temperature. So by releasing this sweat and some of the sweat evaporating, you've now reached a temperature where your body is comfortable again. So this is why sweating cools you down. It's not the actual sweating that cools you down, it's the evaporation of the sweat. If you think back to the woman in the jungle and the man in the desert, right, the reason that the woman in the jungle is overheating is because the air is very humid and the water particles can't really evaporate very well and therefore she can't cool down. So sweating itself is not cooling her down. So just to put that into uh, some uh, written form, why does evaporation happen and why does it cool you down? So the key points are the particles in a liquid have a range of energies. Some have got more energy than others and it's the particles with the most energy that escape from the liquid surface. What that means is the average energy of the particles left in the liquid is decreased, and that means that the temperature of the liquid left behind is lower. That's what's going to take more energy out of your skin then, because the sweat is cooler than your skin.